This example is brought to you by Learn EMC. Here's an example of a printed circuit board that's likely to fail radiated emissions requirements. In this video, we'll show you how to change the layout of this board so that radiated emissions requirements are easily met. We'll also make some changes that improve signal integrity on the board. Before we get into the specific problems with this layout, let's take a closer look at a few relevant details of the design. From the circuit board layer stack up, we see that we have a four layer board with both power and ground planes. Notice that there's one millimeter of spacing between the power and ground planes. Power planes spaced greater than half a millimeter are considered widely spaced. The black dots on the board represent vias connecting to the power plane, and the open dots are connections to the ground plane. There are four decoupling capacitors connected between the power and ground planes. This is considered global decoupling since these capacitors are not located close enough to the active devices to be considered local. Notice that the board has three external connectors, a 6 volt power input, an acoustic signal input, and a digitized signal output. This is a mixed signal board since it has both analog and digital circuits. Now with respect to unintended radiation and signal integrity, there are two major problems with this board and also a few minor problems. The first major problem is that high-speed circuitry is located between the external connectors on the board. This can cause cables attached to the connectors to radiate at unacceptable levels. The second major problem is that the decoupling is inadequate for this particular board. Poor decoupling can lead to voltage fluctuations between the power and ground planes as the various devices demand current. In addition to these two major problems, the I.O. lines bring signals too far onto the board and other digital lines, such as the clock lines, are also longer than necessary. To reduce interference to these signals, we need to shorten the traces as much as possible in the new layout. One final problem is that the unamplified acoustic signal shares the same ground plane return path as the digital signals. The interference resulting from sharing a return path is especially detrimental to signals that are both low frequency and low amplitude, and that's exactly what we have here with the unamplified acoustic signal. Now let's look at each of these problems in a little more detail so that we can determine a better way to lay out this board. Let's start with the problem of the placement of the high-speed circuitry between external connectors. This layout will cause a voltage difference between the connectors on opposite sides of the board. As a general guideline, if the circuitry between connectors has signals at tens of milliamps operating at frequencies of tens of megahertz, then that will produce millivolts between external connectors. Now the cables attached to the external connectors can behave as antenna parts, so millivolts of potential difference can cause one cable to be driven relative to another cable at a level that can easily exceed radiated emissions requirements. So what's the solution? There's only one good way to address this. We need to rearrange the board so that the high-speed digital circuitry is not located between external connectors. Now, if we just leave the connectors in place and move components around, there's really no good place to put the high-speed circuitry so that it's not between the connectors. What we need to do is move the external connectors. Let's go ahead and move the connectors to the bottom right edge of the board like this. With the connectors in this new position, we can rearrange the components on the board so that all the high-speed circuitry is toward the left side of the board. Let's go ahead and drop the traces for now and move the components to this position. Notice that some of the components have been rotated relative to their original position on the board. Also, there were four global decoupling capacitors on the original board, and we've just moved them out of the way for now. This arrangement of components will allow us to shorten I.O. lines and other high-speed digital lines 
which reduces the likelihood of interference. But most importantly, with this new arrangement, we'll be able to lay out the traces so that there's no high-speed circuitry between external connectors. This means we've addressed the first major problem associated with this board. The second major problem with the original board was poor decoupling. This can cause voltage variations between power and ground, which can affect the operation of the devices and can also cause radiation or signal integrity problems. Decoupling is intended to stabilize the voltage difference between power and ground. Now, this board already has four decoupling capacitors, but the original placement of these capacitors was global. Boards that don't have closely spaced power and ground planes should have local decoupling. Recall that this board has widely spaced power and ground planes since they are separated by more than half a millimeter. When an active device on a board with widely spaced power and ground planes draws current, the current comes from the power planes first unless there is a local decoupling capacitor very close by. We need to move the existing decoupling capacitors much closer to the active devices and also add a few more. Here's a method for locating decoupling capacitors on boards with widely spaced power and ground planes. This method assumes that the active devices and decoupling capacitors are on the same side of the board, which is the case we have here. First, look at the layer stack up to determine which plane, power or ground, is the most distant from the component layer. If the power plane is farthest from the component layer, then the decoupling capacitor should be placed at the power pins of the devices. Whereas if the ground plane is most distant from the components, the decoupling capacitor should be placed at the ground pins of the devices. For this example, the power plane is farther from the component layer than the ground plane, so we want to locate the decoupling capacitors near the power pins of the components. Recall that connections to the power plane are shown by filled dots on this layout. We'll place the decoupling capacitors so that they share the via connecting each device to the power plane. Now, if for some reason we could not place the decoupling capacitors right next to the component pin, it would be okay to place the capacitor and the via a few millimeters away. A short trace connected to the active device is fine, but decoupling capacitors should always be connected to the plane through vias adjacent to the mounting pads. So here's where we'll place the decoupling capacitors relative to the devices. Notice that the gate array has three power pins, so we gave it three decoupling capacitors. The other devices have just one power pin, so they each get one decoupling capacitor. This placement of local decoupling capacitors will significantly improve the decoupling on this board. And this takes care of the second major problem that we identified on the original layout. So now let's take a quick look at the acoustic signal return path problem. Let's go back to the original layout for a minute. The unamplified acoustic signal shares the same ground plane return path as the digital signals. Recall that current flows in loops. So the current from the acoustic signal input connector to the analog amplifier has to somehow find its way back to the connector. With this original layout, the current will be dumped onto the ground plane at the ground pin of the amplifier, and then it will make its way back to the ground pin of the connector in order to complete the loop. Now it turns out that low frequency currents that use a ground plane as a return path will spread out on the plane, taking every available path according to the impedance of the path. This spreading out of the return current makes low frequency signals particularly vulnerable to interference on the ground plane. So where does the interference come from? Signals that share the same current return path can experience crosstalk due to common impedance coupling. Typically, this crosstalk is on the order of minus 60 dB, or three orders of magnitude. Although it could be greater for long traces running side by side, or it could be less for circuits that are distant from each other. Using the minus 60 dB estimate for the crosstalk, 
A digital signal at 3 volts can be expected to generate about 3 millivolts of low frequency noise in a circuit sharing the same ground plane. A general rule of thumb is that low frequency signals should not share the ground plane as a current return path unless minus 60 dB of crosstalk can be tolerated. We need to provide a separate return path for the acoustic signal by adding a dedicated trace tied directly to the amplifier ground pin. This will ensure that the current for the acoustic signal input will return on the trace rather than on the ground plane. We'll implement this extra trace in the final layout. Okay, here's our new arrangement again. We've discussed solutions for each of the problems on the original board and we're ready to add the traces to the new layout. So let's do that now. And here's a layout that addresses all the problems we've discussed. The dashed traces indicate that we routed the 64 MHz clock on layer 4. This was not essential, just convenient. Let's look at the original board and the new layout side by side for comparison. Here's the original layout on the left and the new layout on the right. We moved all external connectors to the same edge of the board and shifted components so that the connectors are located to the right and below the high-speed digital signals. This arrangement avoids high-speed circuitry between external connectors, which prevents one connector's cable from being driven relative to another connector's cable, like a dipole antenna. The new position of the components allowed us to significantly reduce the length of the I.O. lines and high-speed digital lines on the board. We provided local decoupling capacitors for each active device. These capacitors share the via connecting the device to the power plane, which is the plane farthest from the component layer. This local decoupling allows each device to pull current from the closest decoupling capacitor first, rather than from the power bus. And finally, we provided a dedicated trace for the return current of the unamplified acoustic signal, tying the trace to the amplifier ground pin. This was necessary because the acoustic signal is both low amplitude and low frequency, which makes it sensitive to interference from other signals using the ground plane as a return path. This new layout should easily meet radiated emissions requirements without a shielded enclosure. A few final notes. Depending on the nature of the digitized signal output, this cable may need to be shielded. If so, the shield should be grounded to the board's ground plane. Also, depending on the specific devices used and the quality of the power input, additional bulk decoupling may be required. And finally, notice that we did not provide a separate dedicated return path for the amplified acoustic signal. The current return path for this signal is the ground plane, and since this is a low frequency signal, the return current will spread out. However, this signal has a higher amplitude than the unamplified acoustic signal. The implicit assumption we made was that the amplified acoustic signal would not be sensitive to crosstalk at minus 60 dB. If this is not a good assumption, a dedicated return path should be provided in the form of a trace from the ground pin of the digital analog device to the ground pin of the amplifier, with a single point connection to the ground plane. We'll see a case like this in a future example. For more information, take a look at the articles PCB Layout and Circuit Board Decoupling. These tutorials are available on the LearnEMC website.